coming to a place like this, you're free to think. Like what if, what if, oh, what if? And then to actually pursue it. Within my realm, my kingdom, you're free to kick some boxes around, you know, you, you're free to make a mess of things and go wherever you want. I might borrow an idea from the form of a tree. I might borrow an idea from the surface of a swing set that's frozen in the wintertime. You get that little layer of frost on it. And I might even mimic you. Yeah, because I know that I can take that somewhere. If I go into the jeweler's studio and the fine metal studio and fully immerse myself there for a week, I might be thinking of myself as a metalsmith for the week, and maybe that changes something about how I work, how I approach material. That's why those kinds of opportunities are really interesting and really important, because those do give us the opportunity to go outside of our our materials, and in doing that, go outside of our comfort zones. That's the key, you know, get that all cooking. So if they're open enough to the experience, yeah, they can, they can totally undermine who they were and open their head to who they can be. You start to flip the different abilities of materials to talk about different human emotion, constructs of relationships, our viewpoint on the world. Felt can talk about warmth. Steel can talk about warmth also. We bring in experts in the field, artists that come from all over the country and all over the world. We run these immersive workshops where people come and specifically focus on learning skills or concepts or learning to work with materials or certain tools or certain ways of forming. They learn about different aesthetics. It's time in the saddle. That's what it is. You have to be connected to the material. You have to know how it works, how it reacts, and how it's gonna finish. Everything here doesn't have to be high level and expert. We do beginner stuff. And some people just have never taken a, a woodworking class or a jewelry class, and they think it'll be fun. This is where people do that, at Peters Valley. And they make work that they've never made before. This is a historic anagama, one of the first built in the United States for educational purposes. Give me three shells. Stand that one up right there, a cat. Get put, yeah, the whatever you right need. There. It's a single chamber kiln that takes full advantage of work being in close proximity to the fire and the timber beds. Someone who might be making tall jars, somebody who's making very delicate little figures or large figures working with different clays, different forms, when they get set out to be loaded, they have to be orchestrated into the kiln in a way that will benefit that flow of the fire and the heat moving through. It can be stunningly beautiful, and it can give you surfaces that you really can't get any other way. It's like magic. And that tool allows for artists to come at it from as many different perspectives as there are artists. I love that about it. God, that's where invention comes from, is if we keep our minds open to hearing what other people have to say and <laughs> do. People move heaven and earth to be here. And then at the end of their week or their experience, they're walking out going, holy, wow. And they're starting to latch onto some pearls that they didn't have previously. Somewhere along the line, there's going to come a piece that, that really sings about you. And that is just delicious. <laughs> you know, it's like if you could just hang on to that, it's just the best. <laughs>